The way MPI works, the physics is really very simple. You basically have a magnetic particle to which you excite that ma magnetic particle by an AC field. So when you apply an AC field to a magnetic particle, the magnetization of the particle changes with time. And when the magnetization changes with time, if you put a small pickup coil uh, around it, then the, basically it changes the magnetic induction that the pickup coil will see. And if you change, have a rate of change of induction uh, in, a, in the area of the pickup coil, it will generate a voltage in the pickup coil. So that is the basic idea of MPI. Basically, you have the magnetization, changes with time, it changes the local induction, and the local induction induces a change of voltage in the coil which you pick up. So that is your signal. What MPI requires is not just a signal, but also a way to localize the signal where the signal is coming from. So that is the key point which of course is the genius of the people who invented it at, at uh, Philips. And the idea there is that you apply a field gradient and you have a point of zero field uh, uh, in this two-dimensional area. You have a point of zero field and when, and the physics says that when you have a point of zero field, the signal is very high and when you have a field, long, a high enough field where the magnetic particle saturates, where the magnetic moment, all the moments of the particle are aligned along the magnetic field direction, then you have a very poor signal. So there's very little change with time as you apply the field in this, in this case. So what the genius is really to take this a zero field point and then scan it around. So whenever the particles come to that zero field point, you get a very high signal and everywhere else you don't get a signal. So that's how you localize the MPI signal. People have been making nanoparticles for a very long time. It's not something new. What is really important for MPI, as I already mentioned, is that the particles have to be a given size and a very narrow size distribution. So what people have been doing traditionally is to make particles in water. And when they make particles in water, they, they come out quite nicely, but they have a very large size distribution. These were the original particles that Philips tried with. They're very large size distribution. And what we do is we do it in organic solvents. And when we do it in organic solvents, and we use a, a, a very traditional method that is called Lame synthesis, which is basically you take a, 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 a precursor that will just decompose when you heat it to a certain temperature. And you provide the right conditions that when it decomposes, they can agglomerate and form a particle at those reaction conditions. So that's the basic idea. You take a, a precursor, metal organic precursor, and then you heat it above a certain temperature with the right coordination chemistry around it. So they decompose, the iron oxide particles form together, and then they immediately cap with the surfactant. And, and in this process, we can control this very accurately by changing the ratio of the precursor to the other, other chemicals in there, like the surfactants, those ratios, we can control the size. And then the whole reaction occurs in such a way that the size, once we control the size, the particles, all of them, literally nucleate around the same time. So they all grow to the same size. In some ways, we are at a very, very exciting point in our research. And that is, we have all this broad knowledge across magnetism, magnetic materials, surface functionalization, some in vitro work with cells. And we are really poised, this is what I find really exciting, we are really poised to do some incredible work in vivo, in the sense of, in terms of preclinical work at this point. And so we have all of this really ready to look at how this can be applied, for example, uh, molecular imaging towards cancer, maybe cell tracking, stem cell tracking, um, cardiovascular imaging, the circulation of the particles. And so there, I think, I think we have incredible opportunities right now because we have, everything has just sort of come to that point where we can do a variety of what I think um, rather interesting preclinical biomedical sort of applications.